Many people have been talking about the light depth tool inside of Luminar Neo. So I thought, hey, I might as well try it out for myself. Let's go ahead and jump into Luminar and take a look at how this works. So here we are in Luminar Neo. And you can see I already have the image pulled up. There's no edits on this photo. I'm holding down the backslash key just to show you. I haven't done anything so far. The light depth tool is located in the creative section on the right column. Now, to be clear, this isn't going to be a tutorial, but instead I'm going to be curious about how to use the tool, because I think there's many people who have already taught what the tool does and how it works. So I'm really just going to look at creative applications of applying the tool to an image. So I'm going to crank up the amount here and you can see it's increasing the light so far on these incense. And I want to see if I can kind of make it look like these incense are being lit by the lights inside of the image. And we call that um, motivated lighting in the film industry. So I'll just move this around and you can see that as I drag this up, the light goes from the front of the incense towards the back of the incense, giving me the perception or at least the idea that the backside of these incense are being lit by the lights inside of the shop here. Now, I want to soften that and softness is really just spread. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that uh, a little bit further out. So that way it takes up more of the space that it's actually lighting. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see I'm even getting more light through here. And that's actually really nice because uh, it, it just helps redirect the viewer's eye and gives a more realistic look. Not that this isn't a realistic look. It's just this is allowing for a more creative look at the image overall. So with that set, I think I'm going to pull up on the warmth here because these lights are pretty warm. And so I should probably have a little bit more warmth in the lights that are relighting the incense here. And I'll go ahead and close out this instance because one of the things that I've learned working inside of Luminar Neo is it's not a good idea to over crank the filters. Instead, apply multiple instances of the filters, as long as your computer can handle the computing uh, power necessary. So we'll close that out. And then I'm going to open up another light depth. And I'm going to see if maybe we can refocus some light here. Now, I've never seen anyone doing two light depths, but we'll see what happens. And this time, maybe I won't go as aggressive with it. So I'll pull it down to 25. And then let's just pull this back and forth and see what we can get. And that's putting more of an emphasis on the background there, which I actually kind of like, because right now the background, especially like in this area over here, if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see what's actually happening in that portion of the photo. So I like what this is doing and I'm not going to do anything more to it. In fact, let's see if we can find night, like finally tune it into just that little area. So turning it off and turning it back on. I like what it's doing one more time over the whole image off and then on and yeah. So here's the before coming straight into Luminar Neo, no light depth applied. And then here it is after. Now it's time, I think, uh, I think the light is interesting enough, but now it's time to really like grab hold of the final version or the final edit. And so what I'm gonna do here is let's, let's start off with a color tool because I feel like I need to work with the color. And this is just my own editing style. I like to work with light and then work with color. So let's go ahead and grab the saturation slider and push the saturation, the, the, the saturation, the saturation. Let's push the saturation. And there we go. I think that that's going to look pretty good. Turn it off, turn it on. And yeah, I like that. And then 
I'm just gonna crank up the vibrance really high and then I'm just gonna back it down until I feel like the less saturated items in the photo are better and they make realistic sense. So I think that looks about right. Turn that off and turn it back on. Yeah, I like where, where the light and the color is going so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that down. And now I want to separate some of the contrast in the image. And if I come to develop, there's inside of the light section, the smart contrast. So I'm just gonna grab the smart contrast and just push that a little bit. I'm starting to get that darker feel, even though we just spent all this time kind of redirecting or reshaping the light, it's giving this photo a level of dimension that we didn't have before, because this is the before, and you can see the light is kind of just on the front side of those incense. And now the light is kind of wrapping around, you get a little bit more of a look in the environment. So that's what I'm going for with this particular image right now. And then I'll add in one of my favorite tools, which is Enhance AI uh, or Accent AI mostly. Um, and so I'll just pull this up a little bit. And I'm only looking at the incense, by the way, right now. I'm not worried about what's going on down here because I'm going to come over to masking, grab a linear gradient and rotate that. So it's only applying to the top part of the incense there. And then we'll come back and I may even need to pull this down now. Just pull it back a little bit. And I think that that looks pretty good. So we'll close that. I'm going to add in an additional enhance AI, but this time I'm only going to focus on this area down here. So add the enhance AI, pull up on the accent just a little bit here because we a, a little does go a long way in regards to this effect. So we'll go with masking again, grab a brush, and I'm going to feather this like crazy. I don't need a whole lot of contrast built up in the middle of this image. So that's why I have such a large feather as opposed to what I had on the instance at the top. So here is what that looks like turned off and turned on. You can see it just brightens up this front portion of the table. Now. There's no information that I think is worth seeing right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a develop uh, adjustment here or filter, pull down on the exposure, probably somewhere around there, grab the mask again, and I'm going to use a radial gradient this time. So what I'm going to do is just draw this radial gradient right here and then pull it off to the side just a bit and feather this in. I want to make that like the center point I want to make small and then just feather in that negative exposure, something like this. Now, what I would love for Luminar to allow us to do is to pull this little node off the side so you could just feather everything in, but we'll just make it small and work with it from there. But now what I can do is come back and reposition this. And so now it's not as dark and I don't know, maybe I don't really care for that type. Actually, let's come over to color and let's pull down on the saturation. There we go. I think that that's okay. I don't need any um, color information in that particular area because I'm trying to direct the attention inward into the photo. And really I want to direct the attention up to these incense. So another way that we can do that is I can darken this portion of the photo as well. So let's close out that develop and open up another one, pull down on the exposure to about there, come into masking. I'm going to grab a linear gradient this time and just kind of pull that into the side there. And then when I let it go, you can see how that's just darkening down this little corner over here. And I'm okay with that because I don't really need that information. Like that portion of the image is just not necessary for 
what I'm trying to do with this. And so let's go ahead and look at a before and an after. I like to explore when I edit images, so bear with me. I'm going to go and dive into another tool here. And I think I want to go with mood because mood is where all the LUTs are. And then we'll go with cinematic toning. And I want to add in a LUT. Oh, yeah, that's that's looking nice. Long Beach, Los Angeles. No, Palm Springs. No. And fun fact, these are all cities in California. Santa Barbara. I like the way that that looks. So we're going to roll with that. Did it not take? There we go. All right. And then I'm going to just pull that down just a little bit because I don't need, I don't like to overdo my color grades. I like them to just kind of bring the entire image together, but leaving a lot of the original information. So here's what we came into Luminar Neo with, with no edits on it at all. And here is what we were able to come up with after using the depth lighting tool or the light depth tool. I'll get that name right eventually. Um, and then a few of the other adjustments that are available to us. Hopefully you found some value in today's content. If you did, smash the like button and consider subscribing if you're not already to see more content just like this. If you're considering picking up Luminar Neo, they have a huge sale going on between now and December 1st. It's going to be the biggest sale that they're having for the entire year. And it's a great opportunity to save some money when you pick up the software. Now, if you want to save some additional money on top of that, consider using the coupon code that's popping up on screen or shown in the description box below. If you got questions about Luminar Neo or photo editing in general, then leave it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If you're looking for someone to help you learn photo editing, consider signing up for a training call with me. A link for that can be found in the description box below. Until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.